And does anybody have any family news? I'm going to the back by the looks of it. I'll come back to you in a minute. I'll go right to the back first and then work my way down. <laughs> Yesterday I went alpaca walking, yesterday. Yesterday I went alpaca walking and... She went alpaca walking. <laughs> How exciting. Was it good? Yeah. Very good. I'm coming down there, boys, in a minute. Um, just to advertise that the Community Cinema is on next Saturday at 7 o'clock and the film will be Hidden Figures, which is about the black American women who were mathematicians who helped to get uh, the Apollo space program launched in the 1960s but didn't get any credit at the time. So it's about their struggles um, to overcome prejudice in their period in which they were working. I'll come back. I've entered a chess competition, although I don't have much experience, so I was hoping if anybody could help me get better. So anybody that knows how to play chess? Oh, Richard put his hand up, so there you are, Albert. I don't know. No, neither do I. <laughs> Morning. Um, just to let the church know, my, my prayers for my mom and my, my dad, if possible, please. Uh, she has been made redundant. She's worked at the hospital for 20 years, and they're restructuring and haven't offered her a new position, uh, which she's a bit salty about because she was the night shift manager. <laughs> um, she, she feels it's a very good move. She's been very unhappy with the administration for some time, but she is concerned, especially on night shift, because now there's only one person working in the department. Uh, the CT scan department, she's like, all it's going to take is a trauma and a brain, uh, a brain attack to be called at the same time and someone's dying in the hallway. So um, prayers, prayers for her and my dad as they renegotiate this. Cause she's worked night shift, like I said, for 20 years. As they renegotiate this um, and for the hospital as well and, and the people who still work there. Thank you. One other Concern. One other prayer request is for our caretaker, Mick, who many of you know. Unfortunately, Mick was taken into hospital on Friday with a severe chest infection. And he's current, I think he's still in hospital. He certainly was in hospital yesterday on, anti on intravenous antibiotics. So Mick's not going to be around this week. Um, he's having a, to take a week off. Nathan has very kindly stepped in to do some of the caretaking duties that Mick would have done. And I think there's a team set up to try and sort out the rest. But if anybody's got any help that they can give at the beginning of the week, I think Richard would be pleased to see people. Thank you. And I'll give it to you. So I thought just before we start, we'd um, hand over some of those situations we've talked about today because we don't have a, a spoken prayers of intercession as such. It's going to be interactive later on. But I think when we get some of that information, I, I feel it's important to do, to do something with it as soon as possible. Um, I checked with Louisa last week as well whether it's okay to pray for her this morning. As you know, she's down in Milton Keynes for... Um, for, for apply for, to apply for ministry for that interview process. So for candidating, that's the word. I've been in the Methodist Church a very long time. I should have remembered that word, shouldn't I? Candidating, that's the word. So she has said it's fine that we remember her and pray for her. So that's be the next couple of days. So I will try and remember all the things that came up. There was a lot of information, so I will do what I can with it. <laughs> Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you as we hear today that you're the God that lifts us up on wings, of, wings like eagles when we're tired, when we're weary, Lord. And I pray particularly for those situations we've heard today where people are struggling, Lord, where they need rest, where they need encouragement, Lord. We pray for Lois's family, for her mum and dad, that you might lift them up and guide them as to where their future lies, Lord. We pray for Ruth and all the family things that are going on there. We pray for her as she tries to support them, oh Lord. We pray for Andy and family and us as a church as we navigate that unexpected way forward, Lord. We pray for Lu Louisa as she candidates this week, Lord. We pray for that you would work through those Methodist processes to discern whether she's right for that role, Lord. And I pray just for calm and peace within her 
as she goes through that, Lord. And we thank you for all the... And we pray for Mick as well. We pray for healing for him as he's in hospital, Lord. He's been through a lot the last week. There's been someone or other in hospital of his family for this past few weeks. So, Lord, I do pray for him. And I thank you for him, Lord. I thank you for his love for you and his enthusiasm, the way he gives so much to us as a church. And I pray for us as a church as we just try and work out this week how we do all the things that need doing, Lord. I pray that you'll lift us up all on wings of eagles, Lord. And I do thank you for all the fun stuff as well. We thank you for our packers, that we can do amazing things like walking with our packers. And we thank you for chess competitions. And we pray for Albert, who's obviously a little bit worried. And we pray for those, those of us can help us to teach him. I thank you that we have a family here, that we can help each other with stuff like learning to play chess. So I pray that you'll be with us all this morning, that we'll be able to rest and remain in your presence. Amen. Sorry, Katie, that was a lot longer at the beginning than we anticipated. Are you okay? <laughs> Take a moment um, and have a call to worship. How good it is to sing praises to our God, for he is gracious and a song of praise is fitting. So let us praise the God who is great in strength and mighty in power and whose love will never let us go. So let's stand and sing, Strength Will Rise, followed straight away by Be Still and Know. So we'll stay standing for these two songs. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. He'll lift us up on wings like eagles. Strength will rise. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Our God, who reign for us ever, our hope, our strong of the week. You comfort those in need and you lift us up on wings like eagles. And so we are invited just to be still 
and know that you are God. Be still. Be still. going to enter a time of prayer. We're going to say a prayer of praise, a prayer to say sorry, a prayer of forgiveness, and then some prayers of thanks. So we'll start with a prayer of praise. Um, I'll read the words that are in light yellow. If you could join in with the darker yellow bold words, and those words are, and we praise you. Almighty God, you show your strength by lifting up the weak. And we praise you. You show your compassion by supporting the helpless. And we praise you. You show your tenderness by reaching those in darkness. And we praise you. You show your faithfulness by remembering all your children. And we praise you. Wherever we are, night or day, in wonder and gratitude. We praise you. Amen. I'm just going to give a, a short moment for us to reflect on our week. And we're going to say some prayers to say sorry. God of compassion and peace, forgive us when we don't hear the cries of your children. Forgive us when we don't hear the silence of the oppressed. Forgive us when we don't hear the words of challenge. Forgive us when we don't hear our own words of dishonesty, that we may serve you with our, our hearts and minds and souls. In Jesus' name, amen. And although we do do things that we need to say sorry for, we can always be assured of God's forgiveness. Lord of our highs and our lows, when we are sorry, you forgive us. When we are tired, you refresh us. When we are discouraged, you cheer us on. When we feel forgotten, you reach out and remind us of your always present and eternal love. And so we trust you for today, believing you for tomorrow, and we'll praise you for all eternity. In Jesus' name, amen. Now Lizzie is going to lead us in some prayers of thanks. Now we're a little bit after Christmas now, aren't we? But I don't know if any of you, do, do any of you have to write thank you notes after Christmas for your presents? I know Micah does and, and it's, it's, it's just reminded us that we're only about halfway through, aren't we Micah? So the aim is to get them done before next Christmas. That's, <laughs> it's a very low bar, we don't always reach it. So we write thank you notes, don't we? And another thing we do sometimes is we play a game of consequences. And I know Micah loves this game as well. So we're going to play Thank You Consequences. So really, all you need to do, on your, on your tables, you'll have a plain sheet of paper. If you can find, it should be in the middle, a plain sheet of paper. 
If one of you who's able and happy to write could write thank you God for at the top of that piece of paper. So thank you God for. Thank you God for at the top of the plain piece of paper. And then if the first person wants to write or draw or get someone else to write, if you find writing tricky, what are you thankful to God for? What are you thankful for? So if you write and draw that on the first line and then you fold it over and then you hand it over to the next person on your table who write or draw what they're thankful for and then they fold it over and then if you go around the table like that and then at the end, someone who's happy to read can read all your thank you prayers together as a, as a prayer of thank you on your table. Okay, do you understand that? So, thank you God for at the top. Then write or draw what you're thankful for. If you find writing tricky, if you can get someone else to do it or you can draw a picture, that's fine. And then fold it over, hand it to the next person and then maybe write amen at the end and then read it together on your table. Okay. I realise some of your tables are bigger than others. We only had three people, so we were short and sweet. Have, have we all read our prayers out okay? Are we all done? Yep, brilliant. Um, no, we'll, ju we'll just do it on our tables as a prayer on our tables. That's fine. If you, if you read it on your table, yeah. Right. I'll just let them finish reading that, and then we'll make a start. Are you going to help me? Are you, are you going to help me do my talk? Yeah? Are you, oh, are you gonna, are you going to help? What is it? I'm going to say hiya. Say hiya. No, I'm going to say hiya. <laughs> right then, are we ready to listen again? So, today we're going to be thinking about rest and remaining. So I wonder, how easy do we find it to rest? See, taking time to rest and relax is important, isn't it? It's part of the natural rhythm of life. But in our busy world, it can be difficult to keep that rhythm. Rest is necessary and not simply something we do when we are too tired to do anything else or a self-indulgent luxury for the few that have the time and the resources for it. I think many of us know people who have driven themselves to exhaustion and perhaps even made themselves ill because they have not taken time to rest. It may even have happened to us. Christians too can get caught up in the busyness of church life that we forget to spend time being quiet, resting in God and listening to what God has to say. You see, we see God setting an example of rest right at the very beginning, don't we, in the creation story when he rested on the seventh day. God's son, Jesus, took time out from the, from the busyness and pressures of ministry in order to be quiet and spend time in prayer. Phil's going to read a passage from Isaiah in a moment which uses the image of being lifted up like eagle's wings to describe how God gives us strength when we are tired and weary. And later on, we'll be reading together the passage in Matthew 11 where Jesus encourages all those who are weary. Do you want to head off? Or burdens to come to him to find rest. These two passages tell me that true rest runs much deeper than simply being quiet, doing nothing, or doing something that relaxes us, although those are all good things. It is an act of re remembering of where our strength comes from and spending time in the presence of the God who lifts us up, handing over those things that weigh us down and being strengthened for what is to come whilst listening for God's still small voice of calm. That was an interesting <laughs> time for that, wasn't it? Still small voice of calm. So let's have that passage from Isaiah now. Phil's going to come and read it to us, and there'll be some images on the screen to help you reflect on it as well. So this is from the, the book of Isaiah the prophet. The prophet was someone who brings words from
from God to the people. And at the time, the people were not feeling very hopeful. Have you not heard? Have you not understood who God is? Do you not know how things have been from the very beginning? God is the one who sits right above the whole of the earth. The people seem as small as grasshoppers, and the skies are like the fabric of a curtain or a tent. Powerful leaders come and go throughout history. They fade away like plants. God blows over them, and their time in charge is finished. The Holy One says, Who is as powerful as me? Who created the stars? Who numbered them, named them, called them into being? All the stars were made by God, and because God is powerful, not one of them is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, God doesn't see my life or treat me fairly? Have you not heard? The Lord is everlasting. The Lord made everything. God does not get tired or feel faint. God's understanding is deeper than we will ever know. God gives strength to the weak and power to the people who have none. Even young people feel faint and tired out sometimes, but those who wait for the Lord shall become strong again. They shall take off and fly like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. So we're going to sing a song now. We haven't sung it for a while, but we love it. It's that it reminds us that God's with us in all that we do in our life and our resting and our doing and all the little bits and bobs of life. So it's God beside. Now, can you remember the actions? There's bits and bobs you can do through it all, but the basic actions are God, beside, God behind, God beside, God ahead. God behind, God beside. God ahead. So if you like joining in actions, feel free to do that. So let's stand and sing God Beside. When I wake up in the morning in my bed Eating up my breakfast, bacon and egg. God behind, God beside, God ahead. When I'm going on a summer holiday. God behind, God beside, God ahead. When I'm opening my presents, Christmas Day. God behind, God beside, God ahead. In the sunshine. And the rain uh-huh. In the laughter <laughs> And in the pain oh. Yeah With us in the morning With us in the day With us in the evening Always On your own God behind, God beside, God ahead When there are no cards or letters, no one phones God behind, God beside, God ahead When you fall out with your friends, feeling sad God behind, God beside, God ahead When somebody in your family drives you And the rain Uh In the laughter (laughs) And in the pain Oh yeah With us in the morning With us in the day With us in the evening Always Always With us 
us in the morning, with us in the day, with us in the evening, always. In our tables, there is a bit of a challenge here to find the Bible passage. So, first of all, you want to go to the New Testament, which is the second half of the Bible. We're going to look up look up Matthew, which is one of the first four books. Then we're looking for a big, bold number eleven. Oh, look at that. Lois has got two thumbs up. She's got it already. <laughs> oh, Joan has to. Okay, okay. It's not a race. Um, and then the tiny numbers, 28. And then we're going to read to the tiny number, 30, to the end of that sentence. So, if someone feels confident on your table, um, read that amongst yourselves. And then we're going to discuss some of these questions. Now, we're not giving you very long to talk about them at all. So, maybe pick one or two talk about those and the questions are what do you find restful how do you relax how easy do you find it to stop and rest in the passage Jesus says come to me all who are weary or burdened and I will give you rest how would you go how we a little sorry how would going to Jesus give you rest do you think and lastly, can you think of any other Bible passages that talk about people resting, sleeping, or taking themselves away for us from a situation? So we're just going to give you a few minutes to read that Bible verse, Matthew 11, 28 to 30, and then discuss one or two of these questions. Over to you. Okay. So, we're wondering whether there was anything anybody wanted to share, any Bible verses that you thought might be um, really beneficial for other people, or any ways of resting that you thought, actually, that's really unusual, other people might want to know about that. Okay, Lizzie's going to come around with a microphone, so just put your hand up. The Lord gives strength to his people and blesses them with his peace. I think it's Isaiah. I just can't remember. <laughs> If anyone's got a phone and wants to look that up, is it the Lord gives strength to his people and blesses them with peace? We think it's an Isaiah, so anyone wants to do a bit of research. Has so anyone else got anyone anything, else? anything particular burning they want to, they'd like to feed back to the rest of the group? David has. <laughs> Resting. Retirement is supposed to be a time when you can rest. Well, <laughs> believe me, it isn't. <laughs> Not in the Methodist Church, it isn't, is it, David? You're, you're still a, a, a spring chicken in the Methodist Church, you are. <laughs> <laughs> we had a lovely conversation about that it wasn't so much the activity that you did that was restful, but it was the mindset that you were in. Like, like we were saying, George was saying, uh, cycling he finds really relaxing. But I'm commuting when I cycle, so I don't find it that relaxing because I'm thinking, what do I have to do for work? But it's the mindset that you're in when you do whatever activity you do. So it isn't necessarily what you do to relax. People do some, sometimes when people say to me they do knitting to relax, I was like, I wonder wanting to stab. When I, when I try and knit, it's just a disaster. It's not relaxing at all. <laughs> but for some people, it isn't. So yes, it's, it's, it's the mindset you're in while you're doing that particular thing. We'll come to you in a minute, Richard. I was saying that prayer was, was sometimes uh, relaxing, depending on what kind of prayer it is. And you feel a sense of concentration when a number of people are gathered together praying quietly. And something Louise mentioned, which I hadn't heard before, was something called a prayer rap, which she sometimes listens to, apparently, which can be a bit of music with a passage and a question at the end, and maybe just five minutes. And uh, she finds that very restful. A prayer rap, how do you spell that? Is it W-A-W-R-A-P? 
We get a bit bored because I think if you're praying with the same thing all the time, but um, Rich and I use them and they're brilliant and they're just about five minutes. I've introduced them to lots of my friends and um, one that we like is called Lectio Divina 365 and the other one is called Pray As You Go and I'd really recommend them for those of you who are app savvy to just download them and just see what you feel. Uh, because five minutes in a day, most of us can manage with a cup of coffee or just as you're going to work or whatever. Yeah. And the psalm that we, we found is um, Psalm 29:11. The Lord gives strength to his people. Thank you. Amazing. Thank you. And going from one extreme to the other, uh, two of us in this little group at the back relax with steam trains. Steam trains are the best. And dogs, to be fair, if you ask me, spending time with animals, definitely my happy... I might just sit here and give up, actually. No, I'm going to sit. Please don't do that, Lizzie. <laughs> <laughs> we need you to play the piano. So do you want to take, do you want to take back over, Katie? Yeah. Um, so thank you so much for discussing all those things and sharing. It's really interesting to hear how other people kind of engage with the Bible and, and read it and find out more about it. We're going to stand now, if you're able, to sing, Lord, I come to you. Oh. We've got a new pianist, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> to change all my settings I turned it off to stop it being pressed <laughs> i 
So we're going to have a prayer time now. So what we're going to do is going to be a video on the screen. It's a very relaxing video. If you prefer just to sit at your tables and your chairs and just watch this video a couple of times through and just use this time to be in the presence of God and listen and have some peace, then do that. That's absolutely fine. There are some also a few prayer stations around the place as well. So over there, can you see there's a globe and some candles? I need to bring that candle forward. We're going to light a candle and place it by the globe as you maybe say a prayer and think of somewhere in the world that's experiencing unrest at the moment. So where is that unrest that you want to pray for? And right at the back there, there's a bowl. Right at the very back behind Karen, there's a bowl of water and some stones. Maybe you'd like to put a stone in the water. It'd make a very big clunk. <laughs> put a stone in the water and watch the ripples spread out. And maybe spend some time just to say sorry. Sorry to God for when we haven't taken the time to rest and be in God's presence. And over here we have some eagle's wings cut out. So who do you know that needs to be lifted up at the moment? Maybe it's you, I don't know. If you'd like to take some eagle's wings, you can cut them out if you want to. But there's some pens. You'd like to write some words of encouragement for someone that needs to hear them at the moment so they can be lifted up. So maybe you could give it to them then after this as a, as a sign of encouragement, or you could keep it for yourself as a, as a reminder to pray for them. So we have a prayers for unrest in the world over there, confession over there, and who needs to be lifted up on eagle's wings over here. And there'll be a video on the screen just for you to spend some time resting and reflecting. So I'm just going to have about five minutes now doing that. Okay. And as we finish our prayers, we just pray together to lift them up to God. Creator God, you count all the stars. Not one of them is missing from your love. Thank you that we're all remembered by you and that no one misses out on your loving care. Amen. 
if you'd like to join um, as we say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We're going to join together to sing our final song. So let's stand and sing, Lord of all hopefulness, Lord of all joy. Again, reminding us that God is with us at all times of the day and whatever we're doing. As we're standing, um, we uh, thought it'd be lovely to bless each other to go out, so we're going to say the Northumbrian prayer together. May the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ go with you, wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. And the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>